Frank Hornby established Meccano Limited in 1908 to make metal construction sets. The company later moved into model railways with their first O-gauge clockwork trains appearing in 1920. In the early 1930s, Meccano had made many types of tin plate and other metal cars, like its Morgan and BSA three-wheelers, mostly in kit form. In 1933, Meccano Limited issued a series of railway and trackside accessories to complement their O-scale Hornby train model train sets. These accessories were first called Hornby modelled miniatures, but in 1934 they were given the name Meccano Dinky Toys and then just Dinky Toys. The Dinky name was also used for the Dinky Builder sets where coloured flat metal pieces could be hinged together to make buildings and vehicles. One story is that the Dinky name came from a nickname that a friend gave to Frank Hornby's daughter. Another version is when one of Frank's daughters-in-law first saw the models, she called them Dinky, a Scottish word meaning neat or fine. By the mid-1930s, six vehicles had been introduced including a sports car, a sports coupe, a truck, a delivery van, a farm tractor and a tank, all cast in toxic lead. Soon after, the MG Magic Midget appeared, followed by a generic ambulance, a grand sport open two-seater and four-seater, a coupe and a limousine. Some smaller vehicles were also introduced alongside model track workers, passengers, station staff and other O-scale trackside accessories. All of these early cars had die-cast metal bodies, chassis and wheels with rubber tyres. By August 1935, there were around 200 different products in the Dinky Toys range, which included die-cast ships, aeroplanes and small trains. Dinky Toys model cars were available in trade packs of six cars per pack. Most models wouldn't be available in individual boxes until 1952. The number of commercial vehicles expanded with the addition of Series 28, which included many delivery vans. Soon, liveries of well-known companies began to decorate the commercial vehicles. In 1938, a new Series 36 was introduced, and most of these models were also made after World War II up to 1948. Dinkies had acute problems on early models with zinc rot caused by lead impurities in the zinc alloy. Metal would crumble prematurely. This was much more common between 1938 and 1941, and it's rare to find surviving toys in good condition from this period. A theory is that lead from Hornby train and dinky toys production found its way into the metal, corrupting it. Between 1937 and 1939, a number of military vehicles was introduced. The military offerings were produced through 1941, though a few select models were also made again in 1946 to 1955, after the war. Military models were made up through the end of production into the late 1970s. A wide variety of military vehicles were produced, like the Jeep-like Austin Champ with driver and passengers. No Dinky Toys models were made between 1941 and 1945. Dinky Toys were made in both the UK and France, and the French factory was occupied by the Germans. The British factory was on war work, but every Christmas a few models would be sold from pre-war stocks. The first new models that were released after the war were US military jeeps. It was the first Dinky Toy made at a scale of 1 in 43. The first significant dinky releases after the war were the 40 series, all British saloons, and the first new model car released was an Armstrong Sidley Coupe. These were the opening chapter of the golden age of dinky toys in the post-war era and represented far greater accuracy and detail than their pre-war relatives. These were very popular and today are often considered by collectors to be the quintessential dinky toy models. The 40 series cars were manufactured from better quality alloy, meaning that the survival rate is higher and although originally sold in trade boxes of six, they were one of the first sold in individual boxes. In the early days of the Dinky Toys range, aeroplanes and ships formed a considerable part of the output of the Bins Road factory, alongside models of cars, vans and trucks. Both civilian and military aircraft were subjects of the Dinky Toys modelers, and the model of the Spitfire was also sold in a special presentation box between 1939 and 1941 as part of the Spitfire Fund in order to raise money for the supply of the real Spitfire to the Royal Air Force. Some models were clearly identifiable, whereas others reissued in 1945 had generic names such as Heavy Bomber and Two-Seat Fighter. 
The reason for this isn't clear, and it may have been that these just weren't true representations of particular aircraft types. Production of model aircraft resumed after the war, with a mixture of pre-war reissues and new models of civilian airliners and new jet-powered aircraft. Production of dinky planes tailed off in 1968, but was resurgent in 1971 with a range of World War II types complete with battery-powered propellers, modern jet fighters, and even a Sea King helicopter. As part of the post-war development and expansion of the range, in 1947 Meccano Limited introduced a series of model lorries, modelled to the usual dinky scale of 1 in 48, and introduced the altered name of dinky super toys. Super toys were commonly packaged in white boxes with thin blue horizontal lines and were marketed all on their own. No longer were these models solely focused on railroad accessories. Still, they didn't quite reach the commercial market level of later diecast brands like Corgi Toys or Solido. The dinky toys ranges became more sophisticated throughout the 1950s. Some sporty pre-war cars were carried over, such as the Alvis Sport Tourer, Sunbeam Talbot, or the Fraser Nash BMW. Models of the latest post-war sports cars joined the lineup, both British and American. Several colourful gift sets of sports and racing cars were offered in the mid-1950s, usually five cars to a set. Production of agricultural machinery and implements had occurred since the 1930s, and such offerings were maintained post-war. One interesting model was the odd Opperman three-wheeled motor cart, a tilting flatbed vehicle with engine hanging off the side of its large front wheel. Dinky offerings at this time were striking, but due to the lack of much competition, development of new models was perhaps a bit slow, at least until July 1956, when Metoy introduced a rival line of models under the Corgi brand name. The most obvious difference was the addition of clear plastic window glazing. While Corgi Toys called their vehicles the ones with windows, Meccano Limited responded by updating the Dinky Toys range, and the models from both companies quickly became more and more sophisticated, featuring such things as working suspension, fingertip steering, detailed interiors, and jeweled headlights. In response to Matchbox, Meccano Limited introduced the smaller Doblo Dinky range in 1958, designed to be used with the Hornby railway system. These were relatively cheap to produce, having a one-piece die-cast metal body, a base plate and plastic wheels. Models were well proportioned and looked similar in style to contemporary Matchbox or budgie toys. Wheels, however, were somewhat flatter and wider than those of Matchbox, and their circumference wasn't ribbed at the beginning, but this feature was added later on. The base plate, however, was pressed steel with etched lettering, not die cast with moulded lettering, as was the case with Matchbox, budgie toys, or Lone Star vehicles. The range met with limited success, and the first model was withdrawn in October 1960, having only been on sale for 18 months. By 1963, all Doblo dinkies had been withdrawn. Rival Triang Toys produced the spot-on range of model cars. To compete with spot-on, the scale of British dinky toys was increased to 1 in 42 in 1963. In 1964, Triang took over Dinky's parent Meccano company, which included Hornby Toys as well as Meccano itself. Since Dinky toys were more popular, spot-on models were phased out in 1967, although a few cars originally designed for spot-on were made in Hong Kong and marketed as Dinky toys. The Dinky Super Toys name was dropped and the large models were renamed Dinky toys. A second series of small-scale models was introduced in 1967. Called Mini Dinky Toys, they featured opening bonnets, doors and boots, and were produced in Hong Kong and the Netherlands. Each model was sold in stackable red plastic garages, with clear removable tops and sides. The model would slide out of a double-hinged opening door to one end. This was in place of the usual cardboard box. They are new. They're authentic. They're the fastest miniature metal cars you've ever seen. New Hot Wheels, only from Mattel. In 1969, two years after appearing in America, Mattel's Hot Wheels entered the UK model car market. Their low-friction axles and bright paint schemes gave new play value and appeal. Dinky and other British brands rushed to catch up. 
Each manufacturer responded with its own version of Hot Wheels innovations, and Dinky's name was Speed Wheels. The company continued to make innovative models, with all four opening doors, retractable radio aerials, new metallic paints, and jeweled headlights. Such features, however, were expensive to manufacture, and toy prices could only be kept low if the quantities were high. And in the face of the Hot Wheels juggernaut, Dinky faced an uphill battle. Triang went into bankruptcy in 1971, and Dinky, along with Meccano and Hornby, were sold to new owners Airfix. Under the new owners, Dinky soldiered on, with their offerings in the 1970s covering the entire spectrum of vehicles, both real and fictitious. Besides the normal gamut of passenger, sports and racing cars, buses, emergency and military vehicles, cars, aeroplanes and spacecraft were also offered from popular and mostly British TV shows of the time like Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons, UFO, Thunderbirds, The Pink Panther, The Secret Service and Joe 90. It could be argued, though, that it was too little too late, as Corgi Toys had been offering for several years vehicles from far more well-known shows and movies like Batman, The Saint, Daktari, James Bond, and The Man from UNCLE. Dinky's seemingly weaker standing made it all the more susceptible to Mattel's unstoppable Hot Wheels onslaught. Likely to save money, in the 1970s, many British-made dinky vehicles lost the precision quality of detailing and proportions seen during the previous two decades. Models like the Jensen FF or Ford Capri were rather chunky and unrefined with thick metal door frames, imprecise grills, and ungainly doors and bonnets painted in separate colours from the rest of the body. However, others, like the Citroen DS Presidential Saloon, were still impressive, flying French flags with driver and battery-operated lights. At this time, Dinky also introduced action kits, which were regular models that came disassembled with build instructions and consisted of about 40 pieces. On the other hand, French Dinky toys, which had to compete with Solido since 1957, were much more accurate, with better paint and sharper details than their English counterparts. Changing fashions in the toy industry, international competition, and the switch to cheap labour in lower wage countries meant that the days of British made toy vehicles like Dinky toys were numbered. After attempts at simplifying the products as a means of saving costs, the famous Bins Road factory in Liverpool finally closed its doors in November 1979. And in 1981, owners Airfix went bankrupt. Matchbox called in the receiver in 1982, and Corgi went bankrupt in 1983. Thus ended the era when UK-made die-cast toy models were dominant. The Dinky trade name changed hands many times, before ending up as part of new owners Matchbox in the late 1980s. It seemed to be a logical and perhaps synergistic development, uniting two of the most valuable and venerated names in the British and world diecast model car market under one roof. Soon Matchbox began issuing model cars of the 1950s and 60s through the Dinky collection. These models were marketed towards adult collectors. The models, like the Wolseley Hornet or the 1953 Buick Skylark convertible, were attractive and honoured the tradition of the Dinky name in realism. In fact, these were often even more detailed than the original Dinkies, instead resembling something like Lido's Vanguard range. Still, production stopped after only a few years. The Dinky collection eventually got absorbed into a themed series offered by Matchbox, which by now was owned by Hot Wheels owner Mattel, who betrayed little interest in any historical honouring of the Dinky brand. Mattel had preferred to occasionally rebadge normal Matchbox models with the Dinky name for some additions in certain markets. No new dedicated Dinky castings have been created in the Mattel era since Matchbox collectibles were shut down in 2000. In 2008, French parts works publishers Atlas Editions began to reissue models previously available as Dinky toys under license from Mattel. These models were only available by subscription in certain European countries, initially France. These models were from brand new tooling, as the original Meccano dies had been previously sold to other toy makers worldwide or were destroyed or lost. In 2016, De Agostini, the parent company of Atlas Editions, launched another range of dinky toys in the United Kingdom and Italy. 
After a test run of five issues, the range was discontinued in the UK. A big thank you to all my patrons for supporting me. To get early advert-free access to new videos or to appear in the credits, please consider supporting me using the Patreon link below from just $1 or 80p a month and hit that subscribe button to get notified of new videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.